Hi again. Today I want to look a little bit more closely at the difference between molecular and an empirical formula. Again, let's begin by recapping their difference, which we came across in an earlier program. The empirical formula reflects the simplest ratio of atoms that are present, whereas the molecular formula reflects the actual number of atoms that are present. So again, let's look at a few examples. If I start with the molecule H2O, its chemical formula indicates two parts hydrogen, one part oxygen. If I reduce that to lowest terms, I actually end up with the same formula. So in this case, there is no difference. I'll try another example, hydrogen peroxide, H2O2. Each molecule of hydrogen peroxide has two oxygens and two hydrogens in it. Reducing that to lowest terms gives me the formula HO. In this case, then, we would see that there actually is a difference between the empirical formula and the actual number of molecules or atoms that are present within the molecule. Another example, glucose, C6H12O6. Reducing it to simplest terms gives me the formula CH2O. So again, there would be a difference between their empirical and molecular formulas. A word here about ionic materials. Ionic materials don't have a molecular formula because they don't make molecules and they already are expressed in lowest terms as they reflect the lowest ratio of our ions that are present in a substance. Consider, if you will, the empirical formula CH2. There are several substances that could share that particular empirical formula, and I've listed a few of them here. The next thing I'm going to try to do is to draw each of these structures. Now, CH2 it's not possible to draw. However, C2H4 is, and likewise C3H6, C4H8, and so forth, so it, I could essentially go further. Now, what differentiates these compounds from each other? One of the ways you could differentiate them would be to look at their molar masses. Each one of these has its own unique molar mass based on the number and types of atoms that are present. So again, using the periodic table, I've listed the molar masses of these substances. They also would differ in another property, which we call its relative formula mass. The relative formula mass is determined by taking one particular molecule of the substance and dividing it by one twelfth of the mass of carbon's most common isotope, which is the carbon-12 atom. This would give the following relative formula masses. Relative formula masses don't have units. You will notice, however, that the magnitude of the relative formula mass is exactly the same magnitude as the molar mass. Now, let's take a look at how we can take combustion analysis or a percent composition question and using molar mass information actually come up with both the empirical and the actual molecular formula of a compound. For in my example here, I'm going to burn 4.388 grams of a hydrocarbon, meaning it only contains two elements, hydrogen and carbon. It produced around 13 grams of carbon dioxide. I also have some information about the formula mass of my product. It's 42.08. Let's begin as we do with typically with most of these questions is setting up a t-chart looking at each of the individual elements. Now at this point I don't have the mass of either of the elements. I only have the total mass 4.388 grams. I need to know how much of that is carbon, how much of that is hydrogen. To do that I'm going to turn to the carbon dioxide and realize that when you burn a fuel, in this case a hydrocarbon, the carbon part of the fuel ends up as carbon dioxide. So if I can determine the mass of carbon that's present in that 13.76 grams of carbon dioxide, that must be the mass of carbon that was originally present in my fuel. Now, carbon dioxide is around 27% carbon. You could watch an earlier program to review how to take a formula and determine its percent composition. Anyway, I put down the idea of how to do it here. So, what I'm going to do now is take 27.29% of the 13.76, and I arrive at 3.756 grams. That's the mass of carbon in my carbon dioxide. That must have began its journey as the carbon in the fuel. So, I know the mass of carbon that was in my sample. Using the molar mass of carbon and converting the mass to moles, I arrive at 0.3127 moles of carbon. Now, the mass of hydrogen I can obtain by the difference between the mass of my fuel and the mass of carbon. I'm going to take that and likewise determine the number of moles of hydrogen. As we do in these questions, we take the lowest of these two answers and divide it into both. 
that then gives me the ratio that exists between the two, in this case, one to two. Hence, my hydrocarbon's empirical formula is C2H2. Now, to determine the molecular formula, I now turn to the formula mass of my substance. I know that if I was to multiply the molar mass of C2H2 times some value n, it will arrive at 42. And n will be a whole number. It could be 1, 2, 3, 4, and so forth. So the molar mass of CH2 comes out to be 14. 14 times n must equal 42. n equals 3. So I know my resulting product must have three CH2 units in it, and thus its formula must be C3H6. So I hope you found that useful. Comments are always welcome, as well as questions. Thanks again.